So here is my new K40 laser. Bought it from Amazon, about 400 bucks. And this is not an unboxing video, but I just wanted to show everybody what it comes like, like how good the packaging is, so you can expect if things are broken. And then I was gonna go through all the common things that people have complained about, uh, safety-wise, and see if they're applicable to this, and then fix them, and then, I don't know, I'll just show you how I set this thing up for myself. Um, where I feel comfortable using it. So, uh, I was surprised to see two layers of protection on this thing. So it's got foam inside, then a box, and more foam. So that was good to see that hopefully that would protect this thing against jostling and uh, getting too broken before anybody's able to use it. But there you see, there's the, the laser and it's three or four controls. And uh, start taking this out and uh, see how it looks. All right, so the uh, machine was actually pretty easy to get out of the box. I was able to do it myself. Not a massive weight. Um, lovingly, they provide this uh, ducting for the fan that they smashed in here so that's that's great i like it um and then here's the chintzy little fan which i'm gonna have to open that area up right there and check to see what the wiring looks like because apparently that is also one of the atrocious areas where they barely connect the wires and such and yeah this cord doesn't look up to snuff but that's china for you um other than that, so far it looks okay. Uh, I don't know how the alignment is, uh, what the grounding is going to be like back there, but I'll figure it out. They also had the uh, the aquarium pump in here to pump some water. And one thing I noticed, and I'll I'll turn this around and show, is uh, there's already water in the tube. Um, so I guess they need to make sure these things don't get cold and freeze. Otherwise, you can end up with a cracked tube. So. I'll, uh, I'll keep chipping away at this and come back. All right, here's the, uh, the laser tube as they uh, shipped it. It seems to be okay. I don't think anything is broken. And while the tubes, these tubes down here, they have water in them, um, it looks like whatever testing they did, they drained the laser tube correctly of any water. Um, so that was nice to see. I don't know. What else I need to show in here? They had a little piece of, I don't know if you can see over there at the end, they had a, a little piece of padding that you might want to remove. But other than that, there's nothing in the way of the, the laser itself that would catch fire if you were to, to start this thing up. Um, the other thing, this, this cover that sits on here, it's got these little things because apparently they understand um, if they had something to hold this open, that would be useful, so that would be too much, so they just put these little spring-loaded, uh, I don't know what you call them, posts, to uh, keep this on here normally, and then when you want to take this off for, say, doing anything with a laser, you can take it off. So that was at least um, nice of them to do that, but you know, for a price point, I guess I can't complain too much. And really, you shouldn't be back here too often unless you're changing after two or aligning your mirrors, which I guess isn't gonna happen too frequently. But anyway, um, everything looks okay back here. I was concerned I might get a, a broken tube. It doesn't appear that way, so I'll keep that closed and then I'll, then I'll go look over here down at this uh, red grounding plug. See how the grounding is functioning and I'm gonna look down here. Oh, let's come down. And it looks like I have some European elements, so I guess I won't be using those. But from what I read online, you shouldn't be using those anyways. They're not properly grounded anyway, so if you plug something into them, you're not gonna get any grounding. Um, so I'll keep going. I'll take this thing off, see how the, the connection to the, the chassis or the case is, and uh, give that some some sanding love to get some electrical connection with the chassis so if anything short circuits 
or uh, electrifies the case, the grounding works properly. Okay, I, I think it was worse than I expected. I wasn't expecting much, but uh, you can't see it, and I'll, I'll bring you down there, but you can see this. Let's see if that focuses. Um, this is the outside, so the grounding plug, a little red piece on the outside. And here's a piece of plastic and another piece of plastic, and then the fasteners holding them together. So the case would be in between here, insulated between these two pieces of plastic, and uh, I'm not sure how grounding the case would work in that case. Maybe I'm dumb? But this seems to do the exact opposite of what you would want to do if you want to ground the case from any potential major electric shocks. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure this keeps the paint looking nice, but it doesn't do anything for safety. And I'll, uh, I'll take the camera off the tripod here and bring you down in the innards. Oh. I don't know, can you see? You can see the, uh, flashlight flashing um, but there's the hole for the grounding and there is no and it's all paint so the case is not grounded at all so this would be pretty pretty scary to use right out of the box and that's why I wanted to go through and do this kind of stuff because uh, it's scary I guess apparently they don't have much in the way of grounding as a standard in China um, that's why they have the grounding plug whereas in the US we have the uh, three-pronged outlets so yeah, um, if you're going to get one of these, uh, make sure to fix that because that seems pretty dangerous to me and I'm not an electrical expert, but I can, I can read <laughs> and that, and that, uh, that's definitely something you want to, you want to fix. So here's the back of the machine. Um, and I just started on this, but I figured I'd show you what I want to do. But, um, first I'm just going to use this razor knife to clean out that hole and I don't know if I can get any closer without it being terrible focus but then just uh, you know kind of scratch on the paint here so that my sandpaper can get a bite but I'm just gonna do that until I get down to bare metal and I'll do that on the inside as well and then uh, we'll have some actual grounding of the case so any electrical arcs arcing to the case will actually go to ground through this top plug here. So uh, I'll get on that and then I'll uh, come back to you. And I have to say, the, uh, the pile of foam that comes with this thing, you see it over there, it's very good as a, like a little working material to put your knees on. I'm on a low table so this is... Uh, actually helpful to me. Maybe some people who have full-size tables, the elite, wouldn't need this, but us plebeians, we need it. All right, so there's the, uh, the sanding job done on the outside at least. Um, so that will make me feel a little safer. It's, it's fascinating how this is a commercial product. You can buy it on Amazon, and yet it ships and it could kill you if you're not careful. I mean, obviously, it's got a laser. That could kill you too, blind you, whatever. But this is in, this is like built-in design or lack of design, just oversight. We're not caring. Anyways, I'm gonna do the same thing to the inside. Then I'll uh, put back on the grounding plug with the wires that were grounded to it. Uh, sands the insulating portions that they put on there. And uh, that'll be a little better, so. So I found that you could take this uh, cover off just like you could the back one so that was nice um, so it was easier access for sanding inside there there you can see it's sanded metals in contact with the case now I feel a little better um, it was odd when I took these off when I took those nuts off it was like the uh, the factory workers knew that you're gonna have to take them off and fix this so it was it was barely hand tightened it required very little effort to get the uh, the grounding components off so I'm going to reattach those, then I'll be looking inside this fan motor, which I don't expect will be uh, very impressive. Um, from what I've read, the best option is to replace your chintzy bent hose 
with some dryer vent hose and uh, have, have the ability to uh, exhaust your air but have the, the actual fan at the, the outside or the, the end of your, your vent run uh, so that you're always, you've got negative pressure and you're always sucking air instead of pushing air. And you know, I'll be venting out this door. I'll just cut a little hole in there, put a dryer vent kind of thing in there. Let's crack into this. See what awaits us. Ooh. Yeah. What? Oh, look at that. Um. Well. Yeah. No soldering or anything. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can illuminate us here. Yeah, it's just uh, let's just wrap some wires around each other and put a piece of plastic tubing and hope for the best. So that's pretty enlightening. Anyway. I guess I'll have to fix that. Just some soldering and shrink to heat shrink tubing. Um, but yeah, this doesn't inspire too much confidence. I'll probably just do what I said and just get an inline duct fan and have that uh, have that hook up directly to the to the uh, the door that I'm going to vent out of. Because yeah, this doesn't look like it would be sufficient to do much of anything. Anyway. I'll at least take care of this and see what it'll do. All right, after some soldering, um, we got rid of these chintzy little pieces of tubing and very uh, loosely held together wires and heat shrunk them. The way these ones were, I had to just do it at the ends, but they will hold together much better now and I don't have to worry about any electrical connections arcing and sparking because they aren't connected properly. And so I'll just put that back on. And I thought to myself, oh, now that I've got this together, should I try it out? Well, what's the point if I don't know how powerful it is? But guess what I have? An anemometer. Because why not have an anemometer? So I'm going to plug this in, and then I'll, uh, see what kind of power it has. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Don't blow up. We'll get this cord. Only from China can you get these cords with no holes on the plugs. I don't know why. There we go. Finicky. Ugh. This outlet, this power strip, doesn't have problems. Really, it doesn't. There we go. So now get out my. And a monitor. Actually, let's go this way. Maybe I'll move this so you can actually see. It's a 5.11. Change by. There we go. Seventy-four feet per minute. Two feet per minute. I guess two feet per minute. Pretty feet. Let's change my units. Miles per hour. Seventeen, eighteen miles an hour. It seems to move a decent amount of air. Feels nice. 
There's the uh, there's that fan. Use it at your own risk, I suppose. After you fix the the wiring in it, uh, maybe use it for some other project.